Welcome back to the Husky Highlight Show. I'm Laura Lemieux. I'm Pete Treparinas. And I'm Jacob Thorne. And we're all very excited to be back bringing you another great season of highlights. The Huskies opened against San Diego State tonight and they prevailed with a 21-12 victory over the Aztecs. And without further ado, let's get straight to those highlights. The Huskies quickly made CenturyLink Field a home away from home. By the time kickoff rolled around at 7.37, the stands were filled with fans sporting their purple and gold Husky gear. Trey Watson started his first game after transferring from Central Washington University and wasted no time in showing that he belonged, returning this interception to put the Huskies in prime scoring position. And it didn't take long for the Huskies offense to get on the board when sophomore running back Bishop Sankey found Pater with this two-yard scamper into the end zone five and a half minutes into the game. Kaysen Williams showed why many expect him to have a big year when he stutter-stepped into the end zone late in the first quarter to give the Huskies a 14-zip lead over the Aztecs. Then, only nine seconds into the second quarter, San Diego State used some trickery to get on the board, hiding a wide receiver, then scoring a touchdown when they caught the UW defense napping. You know, we'll have to see, um, you know, part of the rule is he has to come inside the numbers before he goes back out and has to be um, after the official blows the play, you know, in the play. Um, they can only have 11 guys in the huddle, so there's a lot of things to look at on the film. But, but the rule at the end is with the intent to deceive, and it, it sure felt like there was an intent to deceive because they deceived us, they got us. Sophomore Austin Safarian Jenkins proved to be more than just a blocking tight end, leading the team with 82 yards and one stellar stiff arm. About five minutes into the third quarter, Will Schamberger took this fumble caused by Fulmono 44 yards all the way to the house to bring the score to 21-6. San Diego State added a touchdown with 12.06 left on the clock but failed to convert the extra points. The Huskies' offense was unable to add any more scoring, but the defense held strong and the Huskies were able to come away with the 21-12 victory over the Aztecs. All right, not only was it the game opener for the Huskies tonight, but it was also Justin Wilcox's big debut. Pete, how do you think the defense looked tonight? I think coming out of the gate, they looked pretty good. I was really impressed with the way Josh Shirley did, and he was without a question the defensive player of the game. Um, as a team, they, they sacked Ryan Katz four times, which was nice to see, and they were able to have three turnovers, two forced fumbles on back-to-back -back possessions. So there were some positives, but at the end they faltered a little bit, and it became uh, kind of a, a little bit similar to the Eastern Washington game, where you know at the end of the game they had to come up with some big plays, but they did hold them to 12 points, which was nice. Absolutely, and the offense kind of went down the same path tonight. They started off really strong and then started to struggle a little bit towards the end. Jacob, how do you think they looked overall this evening? Well, Lauren, this was their first game without offensive co coordinator Doug Nussmeyer, and you saw that they kind of tried to lean on their talent a little too much. Kaysen Williams, Austin Severi, and Jenkins made big plays early in the game, but Keith Price kind of seemed to struggle, and when he started to struggle, he started to press. He finished 25 of 35, but the team's used to seeing a lot of really big plays out of him, and when he, when he tried to do this kind of more conservative game management type role, the offense kind of seemed to sputter. Yeah, and they also had a few injuries in there. Jesse Collier got hurt very early in the first quarter, and Bishop Sankey had to pick up a lot of slack. How do you think he handled that pressure tonight? I think Sankey did well. Uh, you know, Collier, we're not still sure how long he's going to be out. They're going to give him an MRI on that knee. But Sankey had 22 touches for 77 yards, and he found the end zone once, once which is good. We, we leaned on Bishop quite a bit, obviously. Uh, we'll have to find a way to, to fill what Jesse's role is if he's out with somewhat of a significant time. All in all, it's, it's good to be 1-0, but I think we're a better football team than this. And um, we've, got, we've got a lot of areas and things to work on in, in all three phases of the game that, that can get us better and, and better quickly and dramatically. Um, but, but they have to be addressed, and we have to start on that first thing Monday morning. And the Huskies have a huge challenge next week. They're taking on the number three team in the nation. Jacob, how do you think they're going to perform against LSU next week? Well, it's going to be a stiff challenge. LSU's strength is their ferocious front seven. And as you saw today, the Huskies had two new starters at left and right tackle. And their right tackle actually got injured, and he'll probably be out for the game. So you saw that with those new starters, they had some challenges. Keith Price took three sacks, and he's a mobile quarterback. 
he had trouble escaping the pressure, and you could see that kind of affect the rest of their offense. Maybe that's what hindered some of those big plays. That's going to happen against LSU, so they're going to need to manufacture some ways to get the ball out of Price's hands quicker or take some of the pressure off that offensive line, or else they're going to have a real tough time with LSU. All right, well, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see for tonight. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on the Husky Highlight Show.